Good day everyone. We are going on a little adventure today, so I thought why not start by recording our drive, as it is a nice Sunday drive. The sun is out and the autumnal colors are really lovely, so let's drive by the fishermen and we'll go down this road. Oh, I actually wanted to show you this is um, still near our road. It's the next road over. This is a shared green space that our two points actually own collectively, and it's always been um, shared by the properties and it's kept, uh, it used to be used for parties and big events, but now it's just basically a green space. People can, uh, who live here run their dogs and things on it. So I just, it's, it's a good place. I'll probably take us for a walk in the future. Oh, and this is an old farmhouse that belonged to the farms that used to, farmer that used to run the properties out here back in the Victorian times. And uh, it's just a pretty autumnal look, I thought. All right, let's drive into town. You can see the colors are changing. The pumpkins are out and it's feeling very um, October. Oh, I had to include this little fellow, this sweet little dog, watching me drive into town. And then uh, I thought I'd record too as we're pulling into the village. You can see some of the houses. I just felt it. I'm, I'm sorry, it's still a little shaky. I finally got my gimbal, but I have didn't have it when I was recording this. But just to kind of see that sort of New England autumn day, stone walls, colonial houses, amber leaves on the sidewalks. Of course, American flags. We love our American flags. And uh, just a fun little outing. And today, since it is my premiere and my celebration of uh, 1,000 subscribers, which is still exciting to me, I thought we would go and have a look at this 300-year-old authentic Half Cape Cottage. It was built in 1718, and it is what is called a Half Cape, which is where you have the door to the left and then the two windows, and it still has a... a chimney in the center. So let's come down the sidewalk and through the hedgerow. And let me see. I can just kind of sneak up on here. Maybe I have a little peek in the window. See if we're able to get in now. All right, let's try the door and see if we can get in. Looks like we can. Come on, let's go inside. Well, here we are. And I'm sure you can tell by my horrible acting that this isn't uh, just some random house I'm showing you, but is in fact a cottage that I own. And uh, this is an old, original 300-year-old house built with oak post and beam, and it has wide plank pumpkin pine floors. And it's still in dust sheets because normally it would be rented out for the summer. And I do apologize for the modern rug on the floor, but again, this is a normally used for a summer rental for us. But I wanted to use this to celebrate my 1,000 subscribers. Well, here we are in my surprise. I've kind of hinted at this place somewhat here and there, but this is my 300 plus year old authentic Cape Cod cottage. So let me share my vintage cottage with you. We'll start in the kitchen, which is in yellows and greens with red accents. Now this part of the house would have been added in the mid-Victorian period, probably around 1880, while the original house is uh, 1718. And it was done over in the 50s, so the cabinets are from the 1950s. And uh, we still have our 1950 original refrigerator which I love and I think would be amazing with Bessie. And then as we go to the open cabinets, I used to, when we used to live here, I had my uh, mid-century china that I collect in there, but since this is being an Airbnb summer rental, I just have things I don't care about breaking. And there's a nice little window to the kitchen in the back with a nice little fence back garden, and we used to have a little vegetable garden back there. And then um, wouldn't Bessie be adorable in here? <laughs> Although, see how tiny the stove actually does have to be to fit in here, so Bessie may be too large for this building. And then um, that little cabinet there holds a dryer, and that window there actually uh, it used to be an exterior window, but in the 1950s they added a little bedroom off the back. And I like that we still have the interior window to let light through, but it is opaque glass you don't see in there. And then let's head into what was the kitchen in the 1718s, but or the keeping room, but is today currently the dining room and then we can continue our tour there. Now this would have been the old keeping room but is now used as the dining room and it has a nice ingle nook fireplace. Unfortunately this fireplace is not in working order. If you were to go in that little white door to the right that leads behind both fireplaces and there's also a little secret door under the stairs but there's a gaping hole in the bricks that lead up the chimney. However, um, you know, it just was never a part of our uh, priorities to have that repaired right away, but maybe one day. It does still have the original um, cooking firearm in the built into it that holds an old metal pot that of course would have been used for cooking. And uh, 
the boards are, you know, the original old boards. Oh, now in this corner we have a little built-in. Oh, <laughs> I had to laugh because I was looking for, all over for that bunny statue and it's been at this house the entire time. But this little built-in corner cabinet, um, which when we lived here held my blue and white spode, but now it holds silly uh, Cape Cod style dishes because again, this was an Airbnb rental. So I had cute little things for um, lobster eating, that type of thing, because when it's a summer house, you decorate differently than when it's your own summer house. But what I love about this Inglenook fireplace is it has uh, like the beams, the old wood over the top under the mantel is the very wide um, planks. Even in the ceiling, the, the floorboards are very, very wide. Like you wouldn't find wood that wide today. And I also love the old oak uh, floors and beams. Now, if you come in closer here, you can see that uh, we do have some of the old metal cooking utensils that would have been used and the again the old firearm is still built into the bricks because this would have been where all the cooking for the food would have been done and you can see it swivels out and in if we ever have this repaired of course it would be lovely to use it my husband's uh, mother's home has one of these and they actually use it to cook in sometimes like to heat up chili or things on a winter's night oh another feature of this inglenook fireplace i love is this little bit of the wall is actually a door that opens into a really deep cabinet and uh, we've always just kept like extra glassware and things for cocktails and such in there sometimes we keep things for hurricanes and preparedness that type of thing but it's just a sweet little feature in the built-in Inglenook now if we turn this way towards the um, sitting room or living room you can see this is my husband's childhood grand piano the piano he learned on. We've moved this piano so many times and uh, it's been in Boston, it's been everywhere, it's, but its final resting place has been this house and it's going to stay there. Now this small little room which was added on, like I said, probably in the 50s, still has the window that was the exterior window and it also still has the original old cedar shakes, which I love that feature. It's kind of dark in here so you probably can't see it that well. And then this old door is another example about how wide these planks of wood would have been, the the because this is a 300 year old door. See how wide that one piece of wood, so it had to be a fairly large tree to make that. So then if you're looking into the sitting room or living room, you can see the old beam. So now this is a post and beam house, obviously built with no nails. So you can see the beams are very thick, nice uh, big thick oak beam that runs down the center. And then the other oak beams are not quite as wide, but still probably about six or six to eight inches wide. And the center beam is probably over a foot. And you can see here that the house is obviously not being built with nails. You can see how the uh, the pegs, wooden pegs would have been fastened. And then this was sort of dovetailed together. And then the wooden pegs would be hammered through to hold this up. And I've heard many stories about these different planks. Some have said that they are from old ships that were brought or that were used to get here from England. And others have said other things. But And uh, again, I do apologize for this very modern rug. But again, when you rent out a place for summer guests, you don't want to use your nicest things. So this is just an easy to take care of rug <laughs> that hides things uh, stains very easily. In the corner I have my old um, Sher uh, Sheraton or my old uh, Winthrop desk and then um, funny old sofas. Oh this uh, although the Cape Cod things I put in for guests but some Cape Cod things I love just because I think they're humorous and I love this old lamp with the funny fisherman. It's very kitsch. It's a bit twee but I think design has to have a little bit of humor in it and then it feels more like a home but I do love this old lamp. So if we were to turn away from the Winthrop desk towards the door there, which is the front door that we came in earlier, you will see the built-ins. And again, do excuse the large television, which was for guests. And we have a, an old bed warmer on the wall. And I love my Berger chair, my orange Berger chair. It's just a little chair I bought at a thrift store years ago. Oh, so now this is the second fireplace. And this is a working fireplace because we had a Franklin uh, fireplace installed. So we didn't have to worry about the brickwork. So looking from the bathroom over this way, you get a kind of view of the main part of the house. And the bathroom still has the little uh, bathroom sign on it that I had actually put on when my mother lived here who had Alzheimer's and um, so that she knew <laughs> where to go and I never had the heart to take it down and and I still feel my mother's spirit here very much so I hope 
I don't ever have to get rid of this house, but I won't think about that now. <laughs> Let's instead look at the beauty of the ceiling and these ceiling boards, again, which are very wide. Some are 14 inches wide. They are actually the floorboards of the upstairs, and I will share the upstairs um, on another vlog. I think I'll probably do a better overall tour once I get my gimbal working. So that is the tour of my secret little cottage, Old King's Cottage. This house means a lot to me. I've had it for quite a number of years and I've even had my aged parents live in here. My mother, who sadly passed away of Alzheimer's, she also, she and my father, I moved them in here towards the end of her life. The house obviously has a lot of happy memories. We've had many happy Christmases and holidays and Thanksgivings in here. However, how I'm able to hold on to this house is we've been airbnb it for probably the past uh, six or seven years since we've been at Bunny Hall, and that's been fine. It, basically just covers the cost of taxes with a little bit left over that we can help augment living at Bunny Hall. But then 2020 hit and here we are. But since this past year, not being able to uh, earn money from it to pay for its upkeep has been rather hard. However, whenever we've discussed having to sell it, I just, I just can't do it because I mean, I hope we won't have to, I should say. The house means so much to me. The fact that it's 300 years old, that it's been here for so long, and you see when I go to antique shops, I get so excited about old things. So to have an antique cottage like this, a house which is older than the United States, to go into is the ultimate piece of antique. Um, and we would do a lot to keep that. I think I'm going to have to put the boathouse reno on hold until spring. And the reason I started to do the reno in the boathouse was because I can't really afford to approach the kitchen properly in Bunny Hall, the main house. So I thought, why not just have fun building out walls? I got Bessie, my vintage stove, and I thought, let's do that. However, now we're coming close to Christmas, which is one of my favorite holidays. And I kept thinking what fun it would be to share decorating and all the Christmas things I love to do with all of you on my vlog. And the thought of somehow being able to also fit in building walls and doing construction myself, which I can do, but I don't know how I would do that and film videos, etc. So I love this house and now I want to share it. And I thought 1000 followers and going into the Christmas season is the perfect time to finally let you see my lovely cottage, which we call Old King's Cottage, by the way, because the um, it's on Route 6A, which is the historic road that runs through uh, all of the Cape. And it used to be the old King's Highway that ran uh, basically just a dirt path that ran the length of the Cape all the way into Boston. And it was actually my dear niece and my best friend who named it Old King's Cottage. So I hope we get to hold on to Old King's Cottage. Touch wood. <laughs> but for now, I have it. It's here. It's true. I have not been able to rent it out, but we have to make lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> and this entire year has been that so much. Even just beginning to find Stephanie and Lalanders and all of you was such the silver lining in a dark cloud of a year that I just, I've lately been feeling somehow it's almost like a sign. Unfortunately, not having any guests here as being the negative, the lemons, if you will. But now maybe the lemonade is me getting to share this house with all of you and decorating it for Christmas and just doing fun projects here and like being able to paint the walls again and start taking it back the way it was when we lived here more than when it was just a rental, a summer rental. Now again, I don't know that uh, Old Kings will be in my future forever. I can't predict the future, uh, but I sure would love if it could. And whilst I do have it, I thought what a wonderful way to celebrate it. And because I, with all my vlogs, I get to have this wonderful record of all the things that I've done with you and with myself at, at Bunny Hall and at the sea and in the cave and all those places, I'll get to keep that. It's like the ideal scrapbook. So no matter what happens to Old Kings, if I now introduce all of you to it and we spend some of our time through the blogs here, I think it will be a great uh, tribute to her, my sweet old antique Cape Cod cottage. And also because it's quite close in Sandwich, uh, it's such a great point because Bunny Hall is out a ways because it's out on the sea. So this is more in the village in town. So I'm able to come here 
And from here, we can go up and down the historic road to go to antique shops. We can go to the museums, all these things, of course, depending on when those things are open more. I guess my thing I was excited to share for my 1,000 subscriber video is that welcome to Old King's Cottage, my lovely antique Victorian cottage, my most prized antique possession I own, that which I can live inside. And then also I thought since we're here, let's just pop into the village and uh, maybe have a quick little walk around there. All right, let's get on with the rest of this video. So we'll just pop into the village and have a quick little walk around. Now I'm not going to go to many places. I'm just think I'm going to go to the local uh, Episcopalian Church's charity shop. But I did want to show as we walk by, uh, this is a sweet little shop, Modern Vintage. They have, uh, it's just really cute items, clothing, that type of thing, housewares. I will take you there one day. And then as we follow along here, this is the uh, St. John's Episcopal Church, which is which is a really sweet little, um, again, little, <laughs> very tiny New England church. I love its red door and its uh, cedar shake steeple. It has lovely stained glass windows inside. Now we will continue on. Now they, this used to be the charity shop, but uh, now it is just the vicarage, I believe. So now this is where the new St. John's thrift shop is. And here's our little sign. And let's turn up here and go up onto the sweet little porch. You can see the Halloween pumpkins are out. And it was just nice to be out on a sunny October day like this. So let's go inside. Now this is a charity shop, so it is not an antique shop. So there's just going to be basically like old dishes, books, things, knickknacks, that sort of thing. But it's always clean and, and sometimes you can find amazing bargains. They all have scarves for $3 and I love scarves. And this was a really beautiful, it was just like an old Talbot scarf, but it was humongous. It was large and it came in this little pink satchel. So I actually, um, I grabbed that. And then just for you to kind of have a little browse, this is just all like knickknacks and bibelots, just little objet and books and not expensive, you know, 10 cents here, $3 there. It is just a church's charity shop. CDs, if people so buy CDs. And uh, they do have a nice a bit of clothing. I looked a little bit, but I didn't feel like, uh, you can't really try anything on, so. Oh, but I did spot this down in the case, these two Jasper Ware pieces of Wedgwood. So I took them out and I looked at them and they were lovely. The plate was 12 and the little uh, saucer was three. Well, we're back at Bunny Hall, and I forgot to show you when we were at Old King's Cottage that when I was at the charity shop, the Jasper Ware Wedge, what I showed you, I did end up getting both the little blue piece, and I love the beautiful, that green is just, I just love that green. And the blue and green together look really nice. I already took it down to the beach and tried it next to the pretty colors of the sea and the sand, so I'll put that picture up here. <laughs> Uh, it just was really inspiring. So I think that will probably be more part of the boathouse and maybe a bit of uh, Bunny Hall whenever we get around to that. And I did get the lovely big scarf as well, which I I think it's really pretty. I mean, it's only $3 at our charity shop. And I think I can even use it as a, wrap it around me and use it as a bodice almost. Well, I hope you enjoy that surprise. Uh, I'm now going to use the energy that I would have used for the boathouse reno, which will happily wait till spring to just enjoy Old King's Cottage with you. We can go there, we can decorate for the holidays, we can do little fun projects there, we can use it as a base to go out and do more thrift shopping and antiquing just because we're right on the historic road. So it makes it a little bit easier. All right, well, uh, I hope you enjoyed today's vlog and I will see you on the chats and in social media and on my next vlog. So until then, stay creative. Cheers.